السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس وی آر ڈسکسنگ دا ٹائپس آف پولیمرائزیشنز اینڈ وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ دا فسٹ ٹائپ ایڈیشن پولیمرائزیشن ان اے ڈیٹیلڈ مینر ان دا پریویس لیکچر وی ہیو اسٹارٹڈ دا سیکنڈ ٹائپ آف پولیمرائزیشن دیٹ از کنڈنسیشن پولیمرائزیشن اینڈ دا پولیمرز آر نون ایز کنڈنسیشن پولیمرز these are also known as step growth polymers we have discussed these and then we have started the polyamides the first type of uh, condensation polymer we have started that is polyamides polyamides they contain the amidic linkage c double bond o n h remember this point they contain large number of amidic linkages and those polymers which contains large number of amidic linkages those are known as polyamides and we have in this we have the nylon 66 we have discussed that in a detailed manner nylon 610 we have discussed the properties used of the these both both of these now today we will discuss uh, the third and important nylon that is nylon 6 it is also known as perlon in usa in usa it is known as nylon 6 remember this point and in germany it is known as perlon in germany it is known as perlon and in usc it is known as nylon 6 here in case of nylon 6 there is only one number in case of nylon 66 2 monomeric units nylon 610 2 monomeric units but here it is clear from the name that the nylon 6 it is made up of from only one type of monomeric unit it means that unlike nylon 66 nylon 610 nylon 6 is a homopolymer nylon 66 ke baad karenge wo hetero polymer tha co polymer tha made up of two monomeric units nylon 610 that is also a co polymer but nylon 6 it is a condensation it is obtained by condensation but it is obtained from single monomeric unit hence it we can say hence it is a condensation homopolymer it is a condensation homopolymer you have to remember this point this is the first point nylon 6 it is a condensation homopolymer it is obtained from now we will see the monomeric unit it is obtained from it is obtained it is obtained from from caprolactam monomeric unit capro caprolactam caprolactam monomeric unit this is the first point you have to mention monomeric unit first you have to remember nylon 6 name is used in america and upper one it is in germany second point it is a condensation homopolymer it is obtained from single monomeric unit that is capro lactam you can mention this one it is obtained from capro lactam monomeric unit now we will see what is capro lactam and how we can first obtain the capro lactam what is the reaction path to get the capro lactam first we see the reaction path dear students to obtain the caprolactam you have to start with cyclohexane this is cyclohexane this is the first point cyclohexane this upon oxidation when you bring the oxidation of cyclohexane oxygen will come out from oxidizing agent that will form a bond with the cyclohexane ring it becomes cyclohexanone 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 it is a ketone don't this point cyclohexanone with the starting material is cyclohexane upon oxidation you get the cyclohexanone this upon treatment with hydroxyl amine we it is actually a ketone you will find it is a ketone reaction of ketone with hydroxyl amine we have already discussed it we have already discussed the reaction of aldehydes and ketones with hydroxyl amine hydroxyl amine is a ammonia derivative we had we have discussed the reaction with five ammonia derivatives hydroxyl amine is one among them this is ketone 
reaction of keto it means that h2o it will come out and this carbon will form bond with the nitrogen what will happen minus water will come out and what you will have you will have cyclohexanone oxide NOH this is the cyclohexanone oxide because when you treat aldehyde or ketone with hydroxyl amine, the product is known as oxide. Then what will be the name? It will be cyclohexanone oxide. Cyclohexanone oxide. Remember this point. This cyclohexanone oxide in presence of concentrated sulfuric acid, meaning acidic tensions. This cyclohexanone oxide, it is a ketoxide. You can say this is ketoxide because it is the oxide obtained from the ketone, hence it is the ketoxide. This is the point you have mentioned. When you heat it in presence of acidic medium, in the acidic medium, meaning in presence of concentrated sulfuric acid, it undergoes a rearrangement. That rearrangement is known as Beckman's rearrangement that is known as Beckman's rearrangement. You have to mention this. This cyclohexanone oxide in presence of concentrated sulfuric acid, it undergoes arrangement, rearrangement. That rearrangement is known as Beckman's rearrangement. I will tell you later on the simple mechanism of Beckman's rearrangement. What happens in the Beckman's rearrangement? Ketoxime is converted into the amide. This is the uh, Beckman's rearrangement, ketoxime. This is the ketoxime, it will be converted into the oxime. Remember, this is ketoxime, it will be converted into the amide. In the rearrangement, what happens? This nitrogen enters into the ring, remember this point, and this ketoxime will be converted into the amide. It means that it is a six member ring, one, two, three, four, five, six. In the rearrangement, nitrogen enter into the ring. It will become seven-membered now. You have N. Remember this point. It becomes amide or C double bond O. This is the way. This is the amide. C double bond O N. Remember this point. It will be the H. It will be the H. Ketoxide is converted into amide. C double bond O N H. It was six member ring, but when nitrogen enter into the ring, it becomes seven member ring. It means that you have the other common atoms as one, two, three, four, five, six, and we have the seven. This is the way. You have to mention this in presence of concentrated sulfuric acid, this ketoxyme, this cyclohexanone oxyme, the ketoxyme, it undergoes Beckman's rearrangement. What is Beckman's rearrangement? Ketoxyme is converted into amide C double bond O N H. This is the amide linkage. Remember this one. And this amide is known as caprolactam. This is known as caprolactam. And it is the monomeric unit of the nylon 6. You have to mention how first we get the nylon, this caprolactam. This is caprolactam, dear students. And it is the monomer of, it is the monomer of nylon 6. What happens in the reaction part? You have to heat the caprolactam. You have to heat the caprolactam. Remember this point. Uh, you have to heat the caprolactam at a temperature of 533 to 543 Kelvin. It undergoes hydrolysis. It undergoes, it undergoes this caprolactam at this temperature and in presence of water it undergoes hydrolysis. What you get, what you get, you will get this, this uh, reactant, you will get this uh, unit, this hydrolysis will proceed as Nitrogen is more electronegative than this. Here negative here H plus that will go here. Carbon plus charge here OH minus Simple mechanism is there. H plus will go to nitrogen and OH minus will go to carbon. It will you will get NH2. NH2. Then we will have this bond will break. 
then we have one CH2, 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 CH2. How many CH2? Five. CH2, CH2, CH2. We will have CH2. You will have CH2. One, two, three, four, five. And this C double bond O, OH will attack this. It will become acidic. This is the way. This caprolactam upon acid upon hydrolysis yields this one. What is the name? This is the functional group. It will be alpha carbon. It will be beta carbon. It will be gamma carbon. It will be delta carbon. It will be U carbon. Then what will be the name? U amino. Its name is E amino carboxylic acid mein pada hai jis car this acid mein chhe carbon hote hai usko naam hai iska naam hai caproic acid then what will be the name e amino caproic acid you have to remember this one you can also write it as ipac name 1 2 3 4 5 6 six is amino hexanoic acid you can also write it as ipac name six is amino hexan One or a acid. This is the IPAC name of this one. You have to simply remember caprolactam. आपने ये कहा the starting material of nylon cis is caprolactam. Then you have to mention nylon cis upon hydrolysis yields e amino caproic acid. Yields e amino caproic acid. We have to mention this point. This is the e amino caproic acid. You have to mention uh, caprolactam. This is the monomer of nylon six. Remember this point. Caprolactam undergoes hydrolysis. Undergoes hydrolysis. Results into the formation of into the formation of results into the formation of. E amino caproic acid, caproic acid, E amino caproic acid results into the formation of E amino caproic acid. This one, E amino caproic acid, then it undergoes condensation polymerization. Now it will undergo polymerization, which undergoes, which undergoes. Which undergoes condensation polymerization. Which undergoes condensation polymerization. Which undergoes condensation polymerization. Finally forming. Finally forming nylon six. Finally forming nylon six. This is the point you have to mention, dear students. This is the nylon six. It means that the monomer of nylon six is caprolactam, but first caprolactam is subjected to hydrolysis. You get E amino caproic acid. This E amino caproic acid undergoes condensation polymerization, finally forming the nylon six. Now we will see the condensation reaction. How it undergoes the condensation reaction? We can write CH two how many times? How many times we have CH two? We have five times. CH two five times, and we have NH NH two, and here we have C double bond OH. It will undergo condensation polymerization. Only one monomeric unit. It contains six carbons. One, two, three, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Hence, it is six nylon six. It is homopolymer. That monomer contains six carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hence, it is known as nylon six. Run this point. This is E amino caproic acid. It will undergo condensation polymer. During polymerization, what happens? Another monomer of the same unit will combine with this one. It means that amino group of another will combine with OH group. For example, I will tell you this as this is NH two. CH two whole five C double bond OH. It is another. What will happen? This OH and H will go in the form of water. Remember this point. H will go from this side. OH will go from this side. It means that it will undergo homopolymerization. 
This is E amino caproic acid. This is E amino caproic acid. It will undergo polymerization forming the nylon sequence. But we will see this. We will write this reaction as. We can mention this reaction as CH2 whole 5. NH. NH2. You will have C double bond OH. It will be N times. It will be E N times. And what is this one? It is E amino. It is E amino caproic acid. E amino caproic acid. It will undergo polymerization. What will come out? Water minus twice N minus water. I have already mentioned. If two will combine, one water molecule will be less. Hence, it is minus one. H will come from the side. OH will come from the side. What you will have now? You will have NH. You will have CH2 whole 5. You will have C double bond O. This one, N times, this one, it is nylon 6. This is the point you have to mention. Here it is 5 times. This is nylon 6. You have to mention the starting monomer of nylon 6 is caprolactam. Caprolactam upon hydrolysis yields the E amino caproic acid which undergoes polymerization, condensation polymerization forming finally the nylon 6. Remember this point. We have already mentioned these things. This is the preparation how we can get the nylon 6 or perlo. Now I will tell you the simple mechanism of Beckman's rearrangement. Beckman's Rearrangement, rearrangement, rearrangement. Dear student, what is the Beckman's rearrangement? It converts ketoxime. It converts ketoxime into amide. This is the first point you have to mention. It converts ketoxime into amide. It converts ketoxime into, for example, we have ketoxime. Or C or double bond. This is the ketone and OH. This is ketoxime. Ketoxime. Ketoxime kaise banega? You have the ketone. This is one. Plus you will have hydroxyl amine. Water will come out. And what you will have? Or C or double bond NOH. Yeh hi maini yaha pe bhi likha hai. RRC double bond NOH. This is ketoxime. We have discussed this ketoxime. L-doxime is in aldehydes and ketones. What happened? Let us say we have R or dash. Let us say we have R to distinguish this. What happened during the real element? Dekhe ji beta kya hota hai? This R dash moves from carbon to nitrogen. This is the first point. You have to write in this way. <clears throat> R comes from carbon to nitrogen. OH goes from nitrogen to carbon. This is the way. R, it moves from, this is stereochemistry. It moves from this direction to this direction. OH moves from, from this direction to this direction. And R dash will move to this R position. There is a simple mechanism behind this. There occurs change in the stereochemistry, rearrangement. There, this, there change the rearrangement. R dash moves to this point. R goes to N. OH goes to C. What you will have? You will have now C. Here now we have R dash. Simple. Here we will have OH. We have double bond. We have N. This is the way. This is the simple change in stereochemistry. chemistry. Remember this point. OH go will do this to this portion. R will move to this one and we have this one. And this carbon valency is same. 1, 2, 4 valency. 1, 2, 3, 4. Nitrogen ke valency 3. Hai. It, it means that nothing has been changed. Simply there occurs change in the stereochemistry. chemistry. Now what happens? You know nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon. It will try to shift this bond here, I bond. Yahan pe minus charge jayega. Isi ke mene yahan pe ye I se likha hai. This is the way. And H plus will move to nitrogen. 
H plus will move to nitrogen. Now what will have R dash? This is the way. C double bond O. C double bond O. Here you have a single bond. N H will move from this to this. N H. Uh, this is R. Now you will see. Dear students, this is amide. Substituted amide. This is substituted amide because we have the C double bond O N H. But what, what is the Beckman's rearrangement? It converts. It is the rearrangement of keto oxide into the amide. It is the keto. It is the conversion of keto oxide into the amide. This is the simple mechanism behind the Beckman's rearrangement. On this point, it is properties. The properties of nylon sickis and uses of nylon sickis they are same. It is practically identical to nylon six six. You can say nylon six. Nylon six is practically identical. Practically identical. Identical to nylon six six and nylon six ten. Nylon sixteen, nylon six six, and we have the nylon sixteen. Practically identical. It is uses properties. Everything is similar to the nylon six six and nylon sixteen. We have discussed the properties and uses of nylon six six and nylon sixteen already. Remember this point. Now we will discuss the second type. This was the first condensation polymer that is polyamides. There are three types of polyamides: nylon six six. Nylon six ten, nylon six. Nylon six is a condensation homo polymer. It is starting monomeric unit is capro lactam. You have to remember these things. Now we have the second condensation polymer that is polyesters. Polyesters. How we can define the polyesters? These are the compounds. These are the polymers containing large number of ester linkages. Ester linkage means C double bond O. This is the the ester link, and you know how the esters are being formed, how the ester functional group is being formed when you treat the carboxylic acid with the alcohol. We have already discussed this. This is carboxylic acid. This is alcohol. For example, this will happen when alcohol and carboxylic acid combines. When alcohol and carboxylic acid combines, what you will have? You will have ester. You will have ester. It means that the first point, these are the polymers containing large number of ester linkages, and how you can get the polyesters by the condensation of जो यहाँ पे acid लेंगे उसके दो side acidic group होने चाहिए. It means that should be dioic acid. जो alcohol लेंगे हमने already पढ़ा ना the necessary condition for condensation polymerization is that the monomeric unit should be bifunctional. मिनिमम बाय फंक्शनल होना चाहिए इट मींस दैट द एसिड व्हिच वी यूज दैट शुड कंटेन टू फंक्शनल ग्रुप्स टू एसिडिक ग्रुप्स एंड द अल्कोहल व्हिच वी यूज दैट शुड आल्सो कंटेन टू अल्कोहलिक इट मींस दैट एसिड शुड बी डाइओइक एसिड डाइओइक एसिड एंड अल्कोहल शुड बी डाइओल इट मींस दैट यू हैव टू मेंशन पॉलीएस्टर्स आर ऑब्टेन्ड बाय द कंडेंसेशन पॉलीमराइजेशन ऑफ डाइओइक एसिड एंड डाइओल्स यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दिस वन You can mention these are the polymers which contains which contains large number of ester linkages. Ester linkages. C double bond O. Ester linkages. These are obtained. These are. Obtained by by the condensation polymerization by the condensation polymerization of condensation polymerization of you have to mention diol diol and dioic acid dioic acid. These are the two monomeric units. One should be diol, another should be dioic acid. Remember this point. And the most widely used, most commonly used polyester is terylene. We have to mention the most widely used polyester is terylene. Now we will take the case of terylene or decaron fiber. 
we have the terylene terylene or you can say decron fiber decron fiber you can mention here most widely used most widely used most widely used polyester most widely used polyester this is the point you have to mention most widely used polyester how you can obtain it it is obtained first i will tell the reaction i will mention the reaction then you can mention the line how we can prepare you have to take a dioic acid and for this the dioic acid is terephthalic acid this is terephthalic acid when the carboxylic groups are at para positions it is known as terephthalic acid it will be n times because we have to prepare a polymer we have a diol ethylene glycol this is ethylene glycol this is ethylene glycol it means one is dioic acid second is diol what happens at a temperature of 433 to 443 kelvin in presence of a mixture of catalysts you have zinc state i will tell you the structure of zinc state this is ch3c double bond acetic acid zinc is divalent hence it is twice ch3 c double bond this is zinc state plus you have antimony trioxide sb2o3 you can mention it is name zinc state zinc state and you have antimony antimony trioxide you have to mention this one antimony trioxide temperature cancellation is 420 to 460 kelvin appropriate is this one you can mention this one 420 to 460 kelvin it undergoes polymerization in this way oh from this will come out h from this will come out and there will be condensation polymerization what you will have now it means that there will be minus n times you have to bad me likhna you can write you have the benzene this is the way you will have c double bond o you will have c double bond o o c double bond o and this o you have ch2 ch2 you can write it as in a better way you will have benzene c double bond o this is c double bond o and you will have c double bond o this one then we have o you will have ch2 ch2 then we have o it will be n time this is known as terylene or it is known as decron fiber you have to mention this how we can obtain the terylene first point is the most widely used uh, most widely used uh, polyester the second point it is obtained by the condensation polymerization of terephthalic acid terephthalic acid terephthalic acid and ethylene glycol in present at a temperature of this in presence of zinc state and antimony trioxide you get there will be condensation minus water will come out yahan pe aap last the plus twice n minus 1 water at the end you have to mention plus twice and minus water remains point this is the reaction for this terylene this is the terylene the first point i have already mentioned it most widely used this is the first point you have to mention most widely used polyester this is the first point most widely used polyester how you can obtain it it is obtained it is obtained by the condensation by the condensation polymerization of it is obtained by the condensation polymerization of it is obtained by the condensation polymerization of 
एरिथैलिक एसिड एरिथैलिक एसिड एरिथैलिक एसिड एंड एथैलीन ग्लाइकोल एरिथैलिक एसिड एंड एथैलीन ग्लाइकोल एथैलीन ग्लाइकोल एरिथैलिक एसिड एंड एथैलीन ग्लाइकोल रिमूव दिस पॉइंट एरिथैलिक एसिड एंड एथैलीन ग्लाइकोल एट अ टेंपरेचर ऑफ यू हैव टू मेंशन दिस एट अ टेंपरेचर ऑफ 420 टू 460 केल्विन इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ यू हैव टू मेंशन इन प्रेजेंस ऑफ अ मिक्सचर ऑफ कैटालिस्ट्स मिक्सचर ऑफ कैटल lists around this point you can mention it means that the terylin it is the most widely used polyester remember this point now we can mention its properties and uses it is highly resistant to chemicals you can mention properties properties and uses it is highly resistant to chemicals you this is the first point you have to mention it is highly resistant to chemicals first point it is highly resistant to chemicals resistant to chemicals if you have ever seen the terlin that will be unaffected by the usage of chemicals remember this point highly resistant to chemicals second point it is crease resistant if you uh, if you crease it with the help of iron what will happen what will happen it will the crease will remain permanently in the terlin cloth it is it is crease resistant this is the second property it is crease resistant and has high durability and has high durability high durability this is the second property you have to mention high it is crease resistant the third is it has a low degree of moisture it has a low degree it has a low degree of moisture it means that it absorbs water to a smaller extent it has a low degree of moisture absorption absorption low it has a low degree of moisture absorption and dries up very rapidly dries up very rapidly if you have the terlin cloth you will see these properties it has a low degree of moisture absorption and dries up very rapidly it is also not damaged by the pests the fourth property it is also not damaged it is also not damaged damaged by pests it is also not damaged by pests remember this point this is the fourth property these are the four important properties of the terlin now you can mention it is uses you can mention it is uses uses of terlin since it has crease resistant quality hence it is used in the manufacture of the cloth since it has since it is cloths retain crease this is the first use since it is you can mention more and more properties and uses from other books since it it is cloths since it is cloths maintain a crease maintain crease since it is cloth is maintain crease therefore used for the manufacture of hand hands it is used for the it is used for the for the manufacture of it is used for the manufacture of wash and wear wash and wear fabrics wash and wear fabrics 
What is meant by washing ear fabrics? Once you will wash it, you don't have to crease it again because it is crease resistant wash and ear fabrics. This is the first use wash and ear fabrics. Tire cords, tire cords, you will have seat belts, seat belts, seat belts and aprons and aprons for industrial work for industrial work remember this point these are some important uses of the terylene or 